Zebros Racing adjustable sway bar. Couple of the key factors and reasons that somebody wants to purchase this for their Turbo S, their Razor RS1, um, is because it's so adjustable. We are the only one in the industry that has seven adjustment holes. Um, so you can go from very soft and flexible for rock crawling and such, all the way up to something that would be more of a short course type setting. So very stiff, um, limiting the roll stability, limiting the roll as much as possible. Um, another cool thing is because of the design of the sway bar, it's made to flex more than a factory one. And that's where the adjustment comes in. So you're able to go from very soft and rock crawl uh, type setting all the way to something very stiff and everything in between. So we kind of have a starting point that has a mark on it for zero and then there's a plus and a minus. So you know you're going stiffer if you go this direction or softer if you go towards the end. Um, the other part that is an option is you can get the adjustable link rods. The advantage here is the factory ones are very flexible. They tend to break. And they also uh, don't put a positive um, amount of rate coming from your bar to the, to the tire because the bar is actually bending and twisting. The factory ones are very small and thin. These are also adjustable, so if you're doing flat track or you want to actually load the car slightly more because you're running without a passenger um, for short course, you can actually load the bar by changing one side to be longer or shorter. Um, so all the hardware is included and yeah, check it out at zebrosracing.com. So the tools that you're going to need, just basic hand tools. So you're going to need an 11 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, a 15 and an 18 in a ratchet, and then also a set of wrenches in those same sizes. And that's all that you're going to need to get this job done. All right. Step one, we're going to remove our stock link rod. So because of the, I don't want to take the guard off, I'm just going to use two 18 millimeter wrenches to break the nut loose and we'll pull the link rod right off and out of the way. We'll make it easier to get this out of the way so that when we undo the mount to the frame we can slide the bar out easier. So 18 millimeter wrenches top and bottom and then hang on to your to the bolts and the nuts because you'll reuse those when you install the adjustable link rod. Alright, so we got the links out of the way and so the bar can just fall down out of our way and then you're going to get your 15 millimeter and come in here and some models like uh, the XP1000s I know don't, they have like a uh, carriage bolt on some of them so you don't have to hold the nut on the back side. This is a Turbo S so you will have to come to the back side and hold the the back of the bolt so there is some some difference from model to model so pay attention to that okay then you're going to pull your housing and your two bushings off pull those out we're going to reuse those on the new bar okay so now that we got both sides undone and the bushing and the housing out of the way you're going to want to slide the bar out so rotate it up and just bring it out. I like to bring it out the driver's side. There's a little less on this side to deal with. And set this to the side. Okay, before you put the new bar in and stuff, take your, your bushings here and clean them and get the old grease off. And then I like to, they use a greaser back behind. But there's little grooves in here. I like to clean those out because sometimes they'll just get filled with dirt and then the grease won't come all the way around the bushing. Um, this is a Polaris part, so if it is wore out and really sloppy, you can just replace these two bushings. Um, and then I do like to grab a little bit of grease, and I'll pre-grease it by hand before I assemble it onto the bar and go back on the car. Alright, so you're just going to put a little bit of grease in here by hand. You don't need much. Do them both, and then we're just going to actually install them onto the bar with that housing. Grab your bar and then you can just put the bushing on just the way they came off. There's this little stopper and they go to the outside of that. I like to get rid of any 
excess that's hanging out just because all it's going to do is attract dirt and dust. And then take your housing and slide it back on like that. Do the same thing on the other side and then we're ready to go to the next step. All right, so you've got everything hand greased and ready to go back in. So at this point here, this is where having somebody else to grab the other side is helpful. So I'm going to go grab somebody and we'll show you that. All right, so we got the bar slid across and got the, the nuts on that side started. Now you're just going to repeat the process, tighten these up and torque them to your factory torque spec. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, so probably in the 30, 30 35 foot pound range. Okay, one thing I just wanted to point out really quick, on the Turbo S, there's a bracket here that is part of your lower bolt, so make sure you don't miss going back through that bracket when you tighten up this lower bolt on the passenger side. Okay, now that we have the bar in, you're going to grab these uh, end arms that have the adjustment holes in them and take out the two bolts that are in them. And you can see in the end of the bar, there's one hole and it's slotted so you're just going to slide the billet arm over and then the small bolt which is going to be the 11 millimeter wrench goes through that hole and then the larger bolt is your pinch bolt so the nice the reason that we do this uh, with two bolts is even if this pinch bolt for whatever reason you over torque it and it breaks you have this bolt here so there's no way that this can fall off and get mangled so grab your 13 millimeter wrench and your 11 millimeter wrench and ratchet and we're going to tighten these up now okay so then you're just going to duplicate that process on the passenger side and get both these bolts tight and then we'll come back to the next step okay so now we're going to get the link rod ready um, obviously pay attention to the direction of the logo and then you're going to notice there's some hardware in here. There's some reducers. And this is for the Turbo S specifically. On the XP1000, it's just going to have 10 millimeter uh, holes top and bottom. But in this particular kit, you've got four 10 millimeter reducers. And then you've got four 12 millimeter reducers. And I'm talking about the whole center. So you can see the center, the center there, how this is 12 millimeter, that's 10 millimeter. So you're going to need two of each. So I'm going to grab two 12s and two 10s. And then this new bolt is going to be your new bolt that goes through the actual adjustable arm. So let's go over to that spot so we can show you how that goes. Okay, so you're going to take your 10 millimeter through hole size reducers and put those in the top. And this happens to be a four seat Turbo S. If it was a you know, two seat, um, probably want to start in the zero location. Um, either one of these, any one of these three holes on a Turbo S, on a regular XP1000 because it's narrower, you're maybe going to want the zero hole, um, maybe even softer if you're doing a lot of rock crawling. So play with the different hole positions. It adds quite a bit of rate per hole. So, but just because I know what this vehicle does all the time, we're going to just run it in hole number four. So you're going to put the bolt through and start the nut on the back side and let it hang there and then we'll hook up the bottom 12 millimeter bolt with the factory the factory through bolt all right so the 12 millimeter ones in the bottom here and they'll just slide into your stock mount and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we'll talk about uh, how to adjust this position we want to get that jam nut up above here so that we can make an adjustment all right, so we've already got uh, the top and bottom bolt tight. So your factory bolt here, the new supplied bolt here. We're going to start in hole four on this car. And then we've extended out the rod. So you can just turn the center rod because you have a, right hand, a left hand and a right hand heim joint in each end. And you want to try to get that, that arm so that it's kind of following the same angle as your, as your training arm. You're going to need a crescent wrench or a large wrench to snug up this jam nut once you get it set to the length that you want. Okay, so we've got everything tightened back up and torqued down to factory torque specs. Um, one of the last steps is you're going to want to grease. Um, we've pre-greased this one, so it's not going to take very much. Uh, but there is a zerk back behind here. It's kind of on an angle, so you have to wrap around from the top of the bar. You can fill it 
and find the angle that it's coming out first so you know where to put the gun on and then just a couple pumps is all you need um, one more thing uh, this has all been done when it's on a lift you can just leave the car on the ground and do it while it's on the ground um, it's just easier for us to film and give you guys a good view but you can leave your tires and wheels on and do it in your garage and don't be afraid to play with this position you know carry around your wrench and ratchet in your tools and if you're you know, going to go to Moab or you're going somewhere where you're just going to be rock crawling try a softer hole setting um, you'll be amazed at and how much pressure the car will be and you'll gain a little bit more flex out of it and if you're out running some wide open desert and you want a little more stability for for cornering and stuff just undo the top bolt and move it forward a hole and and don't be afraid to play with those hole settings uh, everybody um, has their own preference for how stiff you want the how much roll stability so and again if you have questions give us a call or email email us check us out at zebrosracing.com for all of your utv needs you might check him while I was talking. Come on, Ryan. You could have been totally ready. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? Hi, guys. Hey.